Hey friends, thank you so much for tuning in to my live webinar today. If, um, as most of you know, I like to run a running academy on Facebook where I get a bunch of runners together and we talk running. We talk about the struggles we're facing, what we should eat, how we should train, and my goal is to help you to be the best runner you can possibly be. Just a quick background on me. I've been a runner now for almost 10 years, which is just crazy to think about. My running journey has been awesome, but it has also been very challenging. I, um, though I have had instances where I've run very well and great PRs, I've also had times in my life where I was training harder than I'd ever trained. And um, just a second, um, Melissa, could you go ahead? <coughs> excuse me, mute yourself. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, anyway, so. When I was training my hardest ever, running 60 miles a week, lifting, eating really well, I had actually gained tons of weight, to be exact. When I came into college running, I gained 20 pounds, and I was working harder than I'd ever worked. And it just blew my mind, and for so long, I've just tried many different diets. I've asked a lot of questions. I've researched a ton, and my goal is to then prevent you from running into these same problems, or if you're experiencing any of these problems, I want to help you overcome them. So today I want to share my top five tips for runners who are ready to take their training to the next level. So as all of you on here, you've all run races before. Those are the people I like to work with, um, that kind of level two, who have had experience racing and running, but are ready for more specific details on how to take your running to the next level. So as I talk through these tips, please, like I said, the chat feature on the bottom left, ask me questions. Let me know what you want to hear. I'm going to do my best to be copying the links onto the chat feature so you can have the information that I am sharing. I'm very passionate about science-based research. I don't want to tell you things if they're not proven to be true. So I like to share articles with you and let you know um, all the details you possibly can. So let's go ahead and get started. I know the one thing that a lot of the runners in my running academy on Facebook were inter interested in was fasting. And I'm going to post a nice little article on there about fasting for you. Fasting has been kind of bouncing around lately, and at first, it brought a lot of hesitations. Um, I didn't really see how it would be possible for a runner training, you know, over 30 miles a week for hard races could fast and how that would be beneficial. We need fuel. We're training hard, and we need to fuel our bodies appropriately. But there are actually a lot of mental, physical, emotional, hormonal benefits to fasting. After this, you can look at that article to see a few more, but just to name a few, when you fast, it is really good for your insulin levels. Your blood levels drop, or your blood levels of insulin drop significantly, which helps to burn fat, which as you all know, as a runner, one of the best ways to run fast is to be lean. When you make the jump from 150 pounds to 140 pounds, you are 6.7% more efficient as a runner. Now think of how 6.7% could make a difference over a marathon, a half marathon. It is huge and super important for us to be as lean as possible, of course, you know, with a healthy balance. But so this is a great way for us to lean up a little bit is by practicing this art of fasting. It's also very good hormonally. The blood levels of your growth hormone may be increasing as much as fivefold. Higher levels of this hormone, this growth hormone that's in your body, can facilitate fat burning, muscle gain, and can have a lot of other effects on your body. It's also really good for cellular repair. When we're constantly shoving things in our body, our body is trying its best to be everywhere. It's, you know, we're breathing, we're walking, we're we're repairing if we're sick and it when we give our bodies a break from eating we're actually allowing it one less thing to think about you know think about how your brain works when you have five different tasks to do during the day it can feel overwhelming but if you're able to maybe give that one task to your husband or someone else it helps you to feel a lot better right the same thing is goes with our body we need to give it a break so it can properly heal, heal our cells and to help repair our bodies which is crucial as runners when we're pounding out miles on the pavement, when we're increasing our cardio, we need to give our bodies a break. And so often, you know, us runners are highly motivated, which I love, but too often we work too hard and that is um, very detrimental. It causes injury, it um, 
causes us not to be able to burn fat. It actually causes our body to store fat and it's just all around not good for our body. So there's a few general tips with, from what fasting does for your body. And um, now let's kind of talk about how to implement this as a runner. I, um, I don't recommend you going on a 40 day fast with only fruits and vegetables because clearly that would not be beneficial, but runners can practice what's called intermittent fasting on a weekly and in some cases on a daily basis if it's done correctly. So if you are someone who is trying to really lean up as a runner, you need to lose weight, you need to slim down, you are it is possible for you to do a 24 hour fast every five to seven days. So what does this look like for a runner? Well, for me, what has been proven effective and what has been proven effective in a similar carb cycling program is to have your hard day, which is typically your long run, be a day where you eat a high amount of carbohydrates. So for example, for me, my you know average is about 2000 calories a day. The days that I do my long run, I actually consume about 3,000 calories, 50% of them from carbs. So if you look at your little macro pie chart, I don't know if any of you use MyFitnessPal, you want 50% of your calories to be from carbs on your high carb day. What I then do is eat, eat, eat all day long, and then I actually, after dinner, um, go into what's called a fast. So from meal to meal, I am able to do a 24-hour fast, okay? During this fast, I have water and tea. Some, um, in some special cases, if you're a coffee lover, I allow my clients to do coffee, but I don't particularly recommend it because the caffeine spike can um, cannot be as beneficial. But I do a 24-hour fast about, you know, five to, every five to seven days. And at first, it, I was a little nervous about it, you know, breastfeeding and running really hard. But I truly, you know, with the benefits above and with my body, I'm running stronger than I ever have. I'm lighter than I've ever been. I'm leaner than I've ever been. And I truly don't feel like my body is being deprived. And that is because I'm doing it in a very thought out way. You can't just wake up in the morning and say, hmm today is the day to fast. Unless the Lord puts it on your heart, I don't really think that's a very smart way to go about it. You need to have a plan that works very well. A few of the girls in my current VIP program are on a five-day carb cycle and um, are finding it very beneficial. So I would love to share testimonials with you, or if you have any questions regarding those, um, please feel free to put those in the comments. If you are someone who's not necessarily trying to lose weight, but you see, hmm, I could see how this could be beneficial, a fast, um, more of an 18 hour fast would be beneficial for you. So what you can do is you eat your dinner at night, you don't snack after dinner, and you can fast the next day until lunchtime. So you're essentially skipping breakfast. However, you still want to consume the same amount of calories that you would consu consume on a regular day. So for me, a 2000 calorie a day person, I still need to get my 2000 calories in that day if I'm trying not to necessarily burn fat. So that means you're eating a really big lunch and dinner and lots of snacks, which can be really fun. This has just, something else I've really learned from this is when you do this intermittent fasting, it just helps you to be more aware of your body. Sometimes we just wake up in the morning and throw stuff in our body, but are we actually even hungry? It's kind of proven to me to listen and say, huh, do I really need to be eating right now? Am I hungry or am I just thirsty? Is there something else I need? We don't always have to resort to food first to be our you know, necessary fuel. So I hope that makes sense. Again, ask me questions at any time if you need them in the chat. Um, the last kind of fasting I wanna to talk to you about today is fasted tempo in long runs. I talked to this um, with my VIP running girls this morning. It's actually been scientifically proven to be beneficial to occasionally do your runs in a fasted state, which means you run in the morning, you know, not in the middle of the day, you run in the morning and you don't have breakfast until after. This um, is beneficial because it kind of teaches your body and prepares your body for half marathons and marathons. The glycogen stores in your body, which is essentially like the little carb stores, are can only hold about two hours worth of energy. So, I'm sure most of us cannot run a two hour marathon. Some of you might even run over a two hour half marathon. So that means that your body is essentially gonna run out of energy after about two hours. 
So what you need to do is you need to teach your body to burn fat or use fat as fuel. So a great way to practice this is during either your long runs or your tempo runs to do them in the morning and do them in a fasted state. Does that make sense? Again, you know, could I have some head nods or thumbs up if that makes sense to try? It's really good for your body to kind of prepare for a race. So just as we do workouts to prepare for races, just as we strengthen our muscles to prepare for races, it's good to practice what it feels like to run in a depleted state, which will happen during a race. Awesome. So I, um, how often once a week? Great question. So this is definitely not something you want to do on a daily basis. You can do it um, as much as twice a week at the beginning of your training. So Casey, right now you're kind of in the bridge building phase. That means for you, you could do it for both your long run and your workout. If it, as long as your workouts are earlier in the morning. After you get about two weeks out from your race, it is really not beneficial to do. You want to, as much as you can, make sure your glycogen tank is full. So you kind of don't want to be focusing on depleting. So great question there. Awesome. We have another question from Grace. She says, also, if we don't like tea, how does flavored water affect our bodies? Would it be okay to drink ice or vitamin water? That's a really good question. And it's really going to be a situational basis. My number one way to overcome this boredom of water or tea is to, um, to fruit infuse your water or vegetable and fruit. So that means either adding any type of fruit or vegetable to your tea or water. Lemons and water, great, Casey. Yeah, so um, watermelons are really good. Mint is really good in your water. Um, lemons, as Casey said, any type of berries are good to help flavor your water. I know that that, um, I can never say it right, that La Crooks water isn't too bad, but in general, take a look at your ingredients. If there's ingredients on there that you don't know what they are, don't buy it. There, there's some kind of junk that's being put in your body that's just not good. Best case scenario is to buy some lemons. They're really cheap at the store. Throw it in your water and some mint. With um, Mint is really good with watermelon. So just kind of play it around. If you even just Google fruit infused waters, you can get tons of ideas. And that's probably going to be cheaper than buying a bottled drink and taste better and be better for you. So great question there, Grace. We are going to move into running the easy runs easy. I, I have one more question from Casey here. It says, is it better fast day after a hard workout or a long easy run day? Or does it matter? That's a great question. It, t it depends on which one you feel is the harder workout. So you should only um, do a high carb day once a week. Like, you know, you don't want to go high carbs on both of your workout and long run days because it's just not good for your body. Um, so you need to choose which one you think is more difficult. Um, you know, after, if your long run right now is only eight and your workouts are eight miles and you're doing tempo runs, that's clearly going to be the harder one. But if, you know, for example, when your long run gets up to around 14 miles, that one's probably going to be the one that depletes you more in the time you need to carb load. So on fast day, can you chew gum? I, yes, I, um, this is kind of a tough one because, you know, gum can have the added sugars. I would rather you chew gum than um, cave into your cravings, if that makes sense. So I would find a gum that is, um, does not have junk in it. <laughs> and I would rather you chew the gum than, um, than do that. The mint can also be good for nausea because there's been times where um, I know some people kind of suffer with nausea. Again, if it's severe, I want you to eat something. I don't want the nausea to be from you not eating, but sometimes just in general, when your body's hormonally changing, it makes you nauseous. So the mint can help that, but just make sure it's a pretty good gum. So great questions. Do we want to move on a little bit more to a couple other tips? Do we want to keep talking about the fasting? Again, I want this to be beneficial for you. I have, I can chat a little bit about carb cycling, but I was going to roll into easy runs because this is something that can be really, really challenging for a lot of athletes. Um, there was a study going out that Runners Connected a couple months ago about, they asked a woman, you know, what does your typical workout week look like? And they said, well, I run three easy runs, I run a long run, and I do a workout, which is ideal and perfect for what you should be doing. However, when they put heart rate monitors on these women and actually saw um, what intensity of workout they were doing, 
over half of their runs were out of range for an easy run. So that means their heart rate was too high to be considered an easy run and their bodies were tired. This is the, one of the most common mistakes I see runners make. And, and I totally understand why. We are motivated people, runners are. We want to run faster, right? And, and in our minds we think, well, if I run my easy runs faster, it will make my races faster. Unfortunately, that is far from the truth. An ideal week of running should follow the 80-10-10 rule. That means 80% of your week should be done easy, okay? That means you should be training primarily in a fat burn heart rate zone, which in general does not go over 150 beats per minute. So that means if you're working out, if you don't have a fancy heart rate monitor, you check your pulse for six seconds and whatever number you get, you times it by 10. If you notice that your heart rate is above that 150 zone, when you are in your head thinking that you're going easy, you need to slow down. I know this can be very hard. Um, I was actually just talking to one of my girls yesterday about how she's worked so hard to get her, her easy runs faster, but we both knew that it was necessary for her to slow down. Your aerobic system is used for 95% of your race, okay? Your aerobic system means that the system that's from zero heartbeats per minute to technically about 160 heartbeats per minute. So you need that system to be strong. You are only going to push in that 160 and above, which is, you know, above your threshold for a very short period of time. So you need to make sure that that system that takes up most of your body and most of your training needs to be very strong. I don't know if any of you heard about um, or are familiar with Ryan Hall and his um, early retiring. And unfortunately, that is um, a lot because of overtraining, which is just so common in athletes. There's a couple different um, levels of overtraining you can get to, but there's actually a point that you can happen where you can go out and bust out a really good PR, but you cannot sustain an easy run for more than 10 minutes, you know, based on your heart rate. They, they've tested this on athletes time and time again, and it's very unfortunate. And when your anaerobic system is overworked and your aerobic system cannot sustain the work that you've done, it will lead to injury. It will lead to hormone dysfunction. It can, it can literally ruin your body. So I, I really um, want to stress the importance of running slow. I know we hate it <laughs> and it's hard, but it is so important. Um, I'm going to just post an article on here for you again about running easy. It's going to give you some general tips at the importance of having a heart rate monitor and the importance of having someone who is coaching you through this. If you are a beginner runner, you know, and you're just figuring out the sport, I don't necessarily think the a coach is necessary for you. But if you're someone who's been training for a while, you know, is needing some help to lose weight or to hit PRs or just needs a program custom to them, I highly recommend that you seek out a coach who is going to make an 80, 10, 10 plan for you and is going to know what's best for your body. So Awesome. Do we have any questions about the easy runs? I know it um, can be hard to choke that down, but I promise you it is what is best for you. So awesome. We have about um, five more minutes. I'm going to try to bust through these and share a special offer with you at the end because my live viewers always get some treats. <laughs> um, the last thing, the, or the last two tips I want to talk about, first one is strength training. I'm going to post another article on here from you. This is one of my favorite websites to look at for science-based research. Love Runners Connect. They have an awesome podcast they do once a week and I don't work for them. I just love them. They are amazing people and they know what they're talking about and they test everything they test on by science. So I don't recommend you go to Runners World to get your information. I recommend you go to Runners Connect if you ever have a question. So let's talk about strength training. As runners, we are so tempted to try to get the miles up as high as we can. We want that number. We want to be able to say, yeah, I ran 50 miles last week. You know, it feels good, right, to know that you busted out all that effort. If you are on a limited amount of time, it is, it is secondary of importance. I would almost tie it to first importance to make sure you are getting in your strength training. I have a quick question from Jen. Would your program be good for someone new who wants to do a first half marathon. You know, I, I do think it would be good just because that's such a long race. That's something that you can't just kind of 
mm, train for on your own if you want to um, do well. So it kind of depends more on your goals. If you, for you, you're kind of at a place where you're like, I just want to run um, and, you know, finish, then, you know, that's, that's going to be more up to you. If you want, I mean, you can, I'll be honest with you, you can go on Pinterest and you can find a, um, a half marathon plan that's going to help you to finish. But if you want one that's going to like help you to finish and feel good, that's going to help you to get lean, that's going to help you to follow a plan that is custom to what you need, then I would highly recommend my program. I'm very personalized. Um, I'm doing it and it is wonderful. Thank you, Grace. Yes, Grace is in my program right now and she's training for a half and is doing an awesome job. She's up to seven miles and we're going to be racking those miles up soon too, Grace. I'm super excited. But yeah, it's, if you're, you know, you really want to go about this casually, then I would say, you know, I don't want you to, um, you can, there's plenty of free stuff you can find online or cheap, but if you want something that's custom to you that you know is going to help you to finish strong, that's going to help you meet your weight loss nutrition goals, and that's going to give you a community of people who are going to support you throughout, then I would highly, highly recommend it. My girls are awesome. We have tons of fun. I'm posting in our private group every day and just seeing their progress, and it's awesome. And I particularly love working with the half marathon distance. It's probably my favorite. So I would be honored to help you join. And stay tuned because you're going to get a special deal on the program if you want to join. So awesome. So. I'm going to just give about a two minute description on strength training. There is a lot of different strength training that is important to running. If you are a beginner to intermediate runners, there has been a lot of proven help in what is called circuit training, um, which would be, you know, lifting with body weights or with your own weight and kind of moving through quick. You're not letting your heart rate go down. You are moving from, from rep to rep to, you know, set to set without resting and you'll notice your heart rate is elevated that has been proven to help runners who are beginners and intermediate runners because you know let's face it you need some time to develop your aerobic system and that is a simple way to do it while also making yourself stronger it's like killing two birds with one stone so but by far one of the most beneficial strength training runners can do is what is called explosive training. So this is plyometrics. This is things that you're doing one leg, balance drills, jumping drills, box drills. Since as runners, we're essentially balancing from one foot to the other for a repeated period of time. We need to make sure each of our legs are, we're isolating them and strengthening, strengthening them one at a time. So um, you know, I'm actually really excited because my focus, um, which I haven't got to talk to my girls about this yet, but our focus for next month is going to be strength training. And we're going to be incorporating a lot more plyometrics into my girls' routines. Um, it's very important, like I said, for the strengthening of the legs and to really make sure you have power to surge in your races, to kick hard and to work up hills. So huge fan of plyometric training. There is Tons of, like I said, free videos you can find online. I, like I said, am a huge fan of Runners Connect and have actually purchased a strength training program that is science-based that I use on my VIP clients because I don't want to just throw things at them that aren't based on science. I don't want to make up, you know, random core routines and other things that aren't effective for their body. So I know there's a few of you on here who are in my program who are using those strength training routines and you know, you can even comment and say how you like them so far. Um, say one of the ones that has been most effective for you. Grace or Jennifer has a question here. She says, what about hips? I struggled with an IT injury last year and was told it was due to hip strength. I'm so glad you brought this up because this literally is the one area that runners forget to focus on. And it's probably the most important. Think of what you do when you run. This is your little legs. Over and over again, you're just using your legs like a little choo-choo train, and we forget to strengthen them. You know, just like we go to the gym to strengthen our arms so we can pump our arms harder up hills, we need to strengthen our hips. So I actually have a lot of different routines in my strength training program for my VIP clients that focus on hip strength. Um, we do a lot of different leg swings and clam exercises. Um, after my, you know, girls get stronger, we even add in tether band routines that are strengthening your hips, and it is huge. Um, I know at least um, a couple of you on here have been doing what's called the Myrtle routine for a long time and have seen huge benefits for their lower leg strength and less injury. So I strength train often, but feel I'm not training the right areas. Spot on. Awesome. Yes. It's as runners, we, we just think, Oh, well I can follow any random plan on the internet. There's 
we unfortunately we can't we need to have runner specific sorry about that little pop up there we have about 10 minutes if we need it <laughs> um we need to have hip specific strength routines we need to have lower abdominal core strength routines we need to have things that work all the little muscles in our body that you know not every person uses who just you know needs to get in shape so yes casey is a prime example who has really benefited from myrtle yes you did spell it right as well <laughs> It is huge for lower leg strength. And um, just a quick um, pop at my husband. He has struggled with injury for years. He is super fast. He runs tons of miles. But one of his biggest um, weaknesses is getting in that strength training. So we, me and him have really been on his doing his myrtle routine and his hip strengthening. And he has not been injured. And he is running fast. He's getting his miles up, which it's a miracle. So, um Yes, hip, hip strength is crucial and important along with that explosive training as well. So again, I want to be sensitive to your time. I have one last tip for you to share. I think one of the most important things we can do as runners is to really take time and invest back in ourselves. I know a lot of you on here are currently being coached, which I think is huge. And some of you actually aren't even being coached by me, but you've sought out someone who understands you and who is, you know, who's going to help customize and take you to the next level in your training. Um, like I said, you know, it's great to get into running and to just start on your own and to read on the internet and, you know, figure out what works for you. But at the end of the day, if you want to kind of take your running to the next level and you want to reap the true benefits you can to reach your true potential, you've got to invest back in yourself, whether that be ordering a plan online that's custom to you or hiring a coach. Um, I did tell you, for those of you who stayed on, I'm going to give you a exclusive deal on my VIP running program that starts February 29th. I have a three-tier structure for my prices based on what you need, and um, I typically have a $99 start fee, which covers your goal setting, all the, you know, the grunt work that it takes for your meal plan, for our one-on-one um, -on -one consult to work through your goals, and I am going to waive that fee for anyone who's interested in joining the next month. So you essentially just got a hundred bucks off your plan, um, which is huge. And, but that's how passionate I am about, you know, connecting you with the right sort resources. I've had, we have an awesome group in my VIP running Academy right now. And I have resources at my fingertips that I haven't had before. Like I said, my strength tenure teens, I'm currently working with a sports nutritionist on a carb cycling plan that we can customize to who you are as a runner and it's been a huge difference. I've seen my girls really step up their game and their workouts. They are supporting each other on our private page and it's just a lot of fun. And I love more than anything, watching people develop into stronger, better runners. I'm going to just give a quick shout out to Casey here. I have gotten to run with Casey for about five years now and just seeing the first time she trained for a 25 K to the runner that she's become now has truly been like, such a joy to me. And I just love working with people like Casey who are motivated, who don't want to mess around, who want to be taught the right things to do and who are willing to work and do the right things and see progress. Casey, didn't you PR in your 5k by a minute in, um, for your turkey trot? Yeah. <laughs> I am blushing. <laughs> yes. She is like, it's incredible. And like Casey is literally built to run. And when she just took the time to say, you know what, I, I want someone to help me to become a better runner. I love the sport of running. And she has grown tremendously. And just like the other girls in my program, I have loved seeing their growth. I love the texts they send me saying they're excited about training and it's a true joy. So whoever it be, I don't necessarily, you know, feel like, Oh, you have, I have to be your coach, but find someone who is going to help you to reach your goals. Who's passionate about the sport who is knowledgeable about the sport and invest back in yourself and push yourself to a new level. Running is literally one of the most beautiful sports I've ever been a part of. And I would be honored to help you make the sport a huge part of your life to get you ready for a race and to help you to be faster and enjoy your time as a runner. So thank you so much for taking the time to tune in and I will talk to you soon. Hopefully don't uh, remember that deal. It's only available for 24 hours though. So got to take